Hi everyone, John the Bee Man Saunders here again. Um, it's really nice to have your own bees and produce your honey. A great product, but we mustn't forget about the lovely beeswax that the bees produce. All those wax glands in the abdomen, uh, tiny little bits of wax coming out of the bee, all that wax, and we're able to make a massive great candle like that. It's a lot of effort for the bees to produce this wax and um, we don't want to waste it so I've made this video explaining exactly how we go about getting all the wax out of the hive and um, ending up with beautiful candles like this we are able to sell and people can have them for Christmas and wonderful gifts they smell lovely the fragrance is just unbelievably nice from a pure beeswax candle so Please watch the video and um, I hope it's informative and you learn something from it. So, thank you. Right, I thought I'd just show you this. You know, um, in one of my other videos it clearly shows you how to extract the honey. I've, I think it's called, um, yeah, extracting honey from the hives. And uh, I thought I'd show you that the wax cappings I get instead of um, blocking up the two filters with the wax cappings I put it through a just an ordinary kitchen sieve that it's got big holes in it lets the uh, wax cappings run down into the double sieve it's quite a good idea then we just take this wax cappings away and put it into the wax solar melter for making your candles and the candles um, I'm going to show you making in a separate video we we'll go to the wax melter now and just show you that. There we are, here's the uh, solar wax melter. I did show this on a previous video. It's got um, a thick glass on there. Double layer of glass. We've got the tray here and uh, a trough here and we um, also put the wax cappings in there yeah. got a lot of wasps about just tip all the wax, wax uh, cappings in there hope you don't get stung by the wasps been pretty well strained just about all the honey's come out well as it melts it runs down into the trough this evening when it dries off um, I'll just get it out in one lump and wash the little bit of honey that's at the bottom wash it off under the tap and you've got nice clean wax making your candles I can't wait to show you the candle waking candle making video it's really interesting, easy to do, you can earn quite a bit of money at selling candles. So don't waste your wax, better than passing it up and swapping it for new foundation in a way because it's more profit in it. There we are, all the, all the wasps on there, didn't sting me yet so put the lid back. There we are, now the the sun will do its work, the heat in there that will melt that and it run down into there and about 8 o'clock tonight we'll get the trough out and uh, pull the whole slab of wax out, wash it off under the tap and there we've got our um, ingredients to make our own candles. Here's me in the kitchen again making my candles. I've got one of these old double pots I've got off of eBay, I think it's 1930s, made of um, 
brown, you've got the old brown and black handles, it looks like a 30s one to me. It's a double uh, saucepan, you've got the water down in there, you've got, and, you, and then you've got a pan at the top, and this is where I put all the wax that I've got out of my solar wax melter that you saw me do earlier. So I just pop that down in there, and there's water in there, and I just put that on there. Instead of the wax bubbling up and melting, it just it, well, it just melts the wax, slowly goes down. Keep the lid on it like that. It won't take very long. Take about 10 minutes, I suppose, 15 minutes to melt right down, ready to pour the um, wax into the, into the moulds. There's a little uh, Denby pot that I got from a charity shop, I think it was about 99 pence and put it in the oven so I use that for, I pour the liquid wax into there, put it through a bit of a filter, it's just a, an old muslin cloth, put that on there like that and then you want elastic band around it, like that, make it, oh it's a bit hot to come out of the other one. Made a mess up of that, we do a single, not quite big enough that muslin, that'd be okay. Put that on there like that there. I can just pour that boiling wax now into there, let a filter it, and I can put it into my moulds. Okay. Now then I'll pour the liquid wax now through the filter into my little jug be careful not to spill it all over the cooker Through, get all the bits out. That can be thrown away now. And we've got our liquid wax now ready to pour in the moulds. Here's some of my moulds, these little tea lights, when you pour the wax into the tea lights you have to be ever so careful because these little, the, the actual wick part moves so once you've got the, water, uh, the wax in there you just have to set them down into the middle and um, like these, these are the skep candles with um, the bees on the side, you want an elastic band around there to hold the form together and I do actually put the wick in the uh, liquid wax so that there's liquid wax on uh, there's wax on that um, wick. Um, it makes the candle last and burn longer. And you want to keep these level. And I just have little bits um, of this that you stick pieces of paper to the wall with, whatever you call that stuff. You stick that underneath and keeps it level. And, and I've got the same there with the little ones and uh, same with the tapered ones. Now with the, when you get these candles that you get four like that in the metal thing you can put your wife's hair grips or your own hair grips on there just to keep the wick in the centre of the form. Okay and the most important thing is that somehow you block this end up. I use a little bit of that tack, it's blue tack that's what it's called. I have to put a little bit of blue tack on there just on the end because if you don't you can have hot wax comes out the end and it has happened to me it's all gone everywhere so a little tiny bit of blue tack or I think you can use tape just over the end 
uh, just to like that, just to make sure you don't get no wax coming out there. It does actually run right out, and uh, I've lost a big load once doing that. It went everywhere, so don't you do it. You just put something like that over the end of these, just just on the end there. Look, where you've got the end coming out, the wick. They are quite hard to, hard to, to um. They are quite hard to thread these wicks through there, so have a long wick so you can keep pulling the candle out. Because once this is set, the candle, you pull it out that end, end like that. Okay. When the candle comes out, comes out a bit like that, and you'll have to just tidy up the end, trim that end, and um, I normally finish it off by dipping that bit of wick in the pot again just so it's got a nice little bit of um, wax on it and you get the skeps and they come out like that um, see it's got wax on the wick because we've wicked the wax in the liquid wax before I put it into the mould and it's very flat on the back look so I had it level so that's how you want it This is where you want a bit of a steady hand. Now, as we pour the wax into this mould, just run it down the wick, the wax, and as this dries or cools down, it will shrink. So you need to top it up every couple of minutes for about three minutes as it, it shrinks. It has not run out the bottom because I've got those um, bits of blue tack. If it does overspill a bit on the mould at the top, so I can just scrape it off after we use the wax. Yeah. I'll do that little one there. Look. There's enough in there for that. Okay, to the top. Top that up a bit more. It's shrunk already a little bit. There we are. Pull that back in there. These are just sunk down a bit, these candles, so I'm just topping them up again. Just a little bit on the top like that. Now that's filled them up now, they probably won't, probably won't need topping up again now. Now I'll do the large skep. Run it down the wick. And I've got it held up with a bit of blue tack so that the hair grip it's not pushing on the top of the candle or the bottom of the candle when you turn it up the right way. See it's level the candle and that blue tech stopped the hair grip touching the... Now we're going to pour these in. Now these are awkward. I always find these a bit awkward. Fill them all up first. These little tea lights. I use this at the end and if I haven't got enough in the Jug, it doesn't really matter because it's just a tea light and I can stop pouring them. Seems like I've got enough of these. People like that, it's just that you've got to centre the wick after. And I've got this, this one here as well. The It's the tapered one. Make sure there's no, that's okay. The tapered one doesn't normally shrink a lot. These these do because they got a metal, the metal, um, because it's metal around it and not rubber. 
it cools quick so it shrinks. This one, this one should be alright that one. Now tip, tip the remainder back in there. Of course, you want a good partner or wife or husband or whatever you've got to allow you to do it in the kitchen and make all the mess I always do but I'll clear it up afterwards. It's not too bad a bit of wax you can scrape it up with a, a sharp blade. So that's, that's setting them. We just want to make sure we've got these wicks in here look. Make sure they're in the middle. Like that. Just move them. Sometimes they come off a little like that. No. That one's fallen off of the of this little thing. See? See what I mean? Just got to get them in the middle, the skin. One has fallen off. The one that's fallen off, I'll just drop another one of them in there. You get a bit of skin come on the top of the... If you can move it just as the skin has started, you'll get it in the centre of the... tea light. See this is like a skin forms on it. That's it. That's it. That's done. If you don't do that, they flop over. So they're all in there now, look. That's alright, that's drying out that one already. That one seems okay, that one seems okay, so that's how we do it. Um, we can turn that off now. So this is quite a good little thing to buy on eBay if you can see them on there, these little double pots. I'll leave them to dry now, uh, or to harden for about four to six hours, then I'll take them out the moulds. Once you've got the uh, candle out of form, when it's dried, you will end up with um, a bit of wick on the end and this bit of wick will be too long. You just trim that off with a pair of scissors, about half an inch, and then um, trim the other end off, right level. I normally just try and tidy that up a little bit around there because it's still a bit soft from where it's come out. So that's your candle basically done. Then just um, with the melted wax we've got in here, just dip it in the, it's not a flight, uh, wash them out still, dip it in the end there. Yeah. It tidies up that end and then this end I dip in there. Just um, a little bit at the bottom. You can even smooth it back, smooth the bottom round on the edge of the saucepan if you want. Like that because it's quite warm. There we are, that's tidied up the bottom. When that dries, I just cut it round with a nice sharp knife, clean it up. So you end up with a perfect candle then, a bit like that really comes out like nice and flat and smooth. But that's just another little procedure. And the same with the little sketch, you know. You can put the dip the wick into the into there like that off the sketch. That's it just make it like that. Keep the wax all the waxes on the top. There we are. That's a little sketch, that's a mini sketch. Same with the tapered ones. We've got the um, clip on there as well, the hair clip, with the making sure that the wick is in the centre of the of the um, mould going down through. And uh, when the candle comes out, comes out nice and clean. We can also dip that into the wax, that wick, just a little bit like that. Yeah. 
comes out a perfect candle and that's what you get. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed that video on making candles. Please press like and subscribe to my channel. It would really help me in the future. And check out all the other videos I've got on beekeeping. I'm sure you'll find plenty of um, entertainment and informative things on there for you. So look forward to seeing you all again. And bye for now from John the Bee Man Saunders.